Hello, and welcome to Van Dievener Black's Technology Roundup Podcast. I'm Jonathan Gallo, and I'm an attorney with Van Dievener Black. On today's episode, we're going to talk about phishing scams. I call this episode, Fight the Fish. In a previous podcast, I discussed tips on practicing basic cyber hygiene. One of the most common attack methods mentioned in the previous podcast was phishing. In this podcast, we're going to discuss the importance of being aware of text messages, emails, or chat boxes that come from someone you don't know or were not expecting to hear from. Now, phishing has been a staple in the cybersecurity threat landscape for decades. That means that phishing is one of the most dangerous activities to an organization's cybersecurity health. As a result, the need for proper anti-phishing hygiene and best practices is an absolute must for any business. So with that in mind, here's a few quick best practices and tips for dealing with phishing threats. Think before you click on any suspicious emails, links, or attachments. Know the red flags. Fishes are masters of making their content and interactions appealing. From content design to language, sometimes it can be difficult to discern whether the content is genuine or a potential threat, which is why it's so important to know the red flags. Things like awkward and unusual formatting, overly explicit callouts to click a hyperlink or open an attachment, and subject lines that create a sense of urgency are all indicators that the content you received could be a potential phishing attack and should be handled with care. Next, you wanna verify the source. Phishing content comes in a variety of ways. However, many fishes will try to impersonate someone you may already know, such as a colleague, a service provider, or even a friend, as a way to trick you into believing their malicious content is actually trustworthy. Don't fall for it. If you sense any of the red flags that something may be out of place or unusual, reach out directly to the individual through a different method. For example, if the potential fish was an email, call the person instead. But don't use the telephone number in the phishing email. Use a different number that you are sure is linked to that individual. And confirm whether the content is authentic and safe. If it's not, break off communications immediately and flag the incident through proper channels. Now, be aware of vishing and other phishing offshoots. As more people come on the internet, digital natives have come online, greater awareness has been spread about phishing, bad actors have begun to diversify their phishing efforts beyond traditional email. For example, voice phishing, or vishing with a V, has become a primary alternative for bad actors looking to gain sensitive information from unsuspecting individuals. It's similar to conventional phishing, but it's executed by individuals posing as legitimate organizations, such as a healthcare provider, insurer, or credit card company asking for sensitive information over the phone. Simply put, it's important that you be wary of any sort of communication that asks for personal information, either through email, phone, or chat, especially if the communication is unexpected. If anything seems suspicious, break off the interaction immediately and contact the company directly to confirm the veracity of the communications. Now, while phishing may be one of the oldest tricks in the book, it's still incredibly effective. That's why it's still being used. And although it can sometimes be hard to spot when you may be in the midst of a phishing attempt, by exercising caution and deploying these few fundamentals, individuals and organizations can drastically mitigate the chances of falling victim to a phishing attack. If you have any questions about this or any other cybersecurity issues, please feel free to give me a call at 757-446-8683 or email me at jgallo at vanblacklaw.com. And thanks for tuning in.